Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power to come on now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Show. My, you, you already know, you already know, you already know. I had to take a little bit of time yesterday to decompress after that debacle. But before we jump in on that Miami Hurricanes embarrassment, Thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and ring that bell. Also, be sure to become a member of our podcast family. Let's talk about this. Miami Hurricanes embarrass themselves, lose 28-23 to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in Atlanta. I said yesterday on Friday or Thursday, whatever I made that video, they have to make a statement. They have to make a statement. Well, guess what? They made a statement, a really bad one. A really bad statement. Mario Cristobal lost a game he could not afford to lose. Mario Cristobal lost the game because Mario Cristobal coached the game like a scared little kid. It is mind-blowing to me to watch the mistakes that this program makes over and over and over and never seems to be prepared. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. This is Rudy's Rant, where we talk facts over feelings. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. The Miami Hurricanes on a week-to-week-to-week look unprepared every single week on both sides of the ball. Miami loses 28-23. Cam Ward gets strip sacked in the last two minutes, and Georgia Tech comes away with the win. Cam Ward could not be the hero yesterday, albeit for anyone that says anything about Cam Ward, Cam Ward was 25 of 39 for 348 yards and three touchdowns and no interceptions. I don't know what you want from him. I don't know what you want from him. Mario Cristobal passes up on a field goal with 227 to go in the first half in a 14-10 game that Georgia Tech was leading. This man chases points. He coaches from some analytics manual. It was fourth down and three. Kick the 39, the 40-yard field goal. Kick the field goal. Make it 14-13. No, let's not do that. Let's try to go for on an awful play on fourth and three and get stuffed and keep the crowd in the game and, and keep get the crowd even more excited. Then you go into the fourth, the second, the third quarter. It's 21-16 uh, after Miami scores. And he goes for two with three minutes to go in the third quarter. Again, let's keep on managing a game by an analytic book. I don't want to hear about the percentages of a two-point play over a one-point play and the value, blah, blah, blah. You know what happens when you don't get it? You're chasing points. You know what would have happened had he actually gone for the field goal? In the first half, the game would have been 21-20 if you go for the extra point. You don't chase points. The only time you should be going for two is when you have to. This is the this is the new world of football that I can't stomach. These folks go for two-point plays in the second quarter, in the first quarter. Because someone else did. You don't chase points. Why? Because Miami left seven on the board. What did Miami lose by? Five. Fourth quarter, 10 minutes to go. It's fourth and 16. Kick the 39 yard field goal, make it 28 to 19. It's like one thing after the other with this guy because every decision he makes has a consequence. Every single one. It may not be immediate, but through the course of a game, 
His decisions fuck Miami up constantly. The game has two minutes left. They come out of the two-minute warning. It's 28-23, Georgia Tech. It's fourth down. And Mario Cristobal's team is not prepared for a potential fake punt from midfield. I don't think they would have ever faked the punt. But you have to be prepared for the possibility of a fake punt. You're not going to fake a punt at, the, at midfield. I mean, it, with, with two minutes left to give Miami the ball potentially at the 50. That would be absolutely stupid. But the threat is there. And they come out in some funky formation, and Miami's unprepared. What's new? So what happens? Mario Cristobal burns a timeout after a timeout. This man is holy when it comes to game management. I'm not going to say recruiting because he's an ace in recruiting. If there was a position, well, there is. There is a general manager position now in college football. That should be his position because coaching should not be. Miami was a 10-point favorite going to this game. You knew Haynes King was injured. <clears throat> I told you he'd play. I, I knew he'd play. His shoulder was shot. He couldn't throw. He threw the ball freaking six times for 32 yards. He was six of six. He was six of six for 32 yards. Like, you, you can't be... You, 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 Haynes King could not throw. In fact, they brought in Aaron Philo, who's a freshman, every single time they really wanted to throw. In fact, there was a third and 18 in which, guess what? Miami's unprepared. And Philo comes and hits a 20-yard, 25-yard play downfield. Miami defensively is the most unprepared football team in America. Mario Cristobal would be a great GM. He's a horrendous, horrendous, horrendous game manager, game coach. No attention to detail. Georgia Tech couldn't score all year. Couldn't score all year. And then yesterday, 28 points with a short with a quarterback with a bum shoulder. I'm sorry. He ran the ball. There was literally three plays they ran the whole game. They ran the whole game. And you know what it means? It means assignment football 101. Stick to your goddamn assignment. Stop biting in. Stop losing contain. Stop doing whatever you want. Stop freelancing. Stop trying to be a fucking hero. When you try to be a hero, you cost your team the game. First possession of the game, Jamal Haynes goes 65 yards right up the middle. Why? No assignments. You know what? You should be thankful. Haynes got hurt. He had three carries for 83 yards. Then they had their backup get hurt. They had so many guys get hurt in their backfield. It was crazy. Yet the play still worked because Miami does not play assignment football defensively. They constantly bite in over and over and over and over and over again. Chase Smith. Oh, my word. Watching that man bite on every play. Makes one good play, next play, chasing the wrong guy. Not, not following his assignment. Assignment football with the Miami Hurricanes defensively is atrocious. They do not, they look unprepared. And all that said, they had the ball with a chance to win. I'm not going to blame Cam Ward. Not one bit. Miami scores. What does the defense do? They give up 40 fucking yards immediately. They make, instead of getting a three and out, and getting the ball back at the 40. No, you let them burn off four minutes. And then Mario, in his infinite wisdom, has burned that timeout right after the half. I mean, I'm sorry, right after the two-minute warning. So now instead of having three timeouts, he's got two. What does that mean? That means even after Cam Ward fumbled the ball, you could have gotten the ball back with a chance to tie it if they make a field goal. You could have gotten the ball back. What happens? Mike makes two stops. They burn both timeouts. They've got no timeouts left now. They've got no timeouts left. So they're going to run the clock. They got clock running, clock running, clock running. I 
I mean, sweet baby Jesus. Had they actually not burned that timeout on third down and eight, they could have called the timeout, been ready to roll. Instead, instead, they ran the same fucking play they ran all game long. They ran that sweet. With that jet sweep type of play. Guys in motion, handoff, first down. They ran that play all game. They ran that play all game. They ran it all game. And Miami never stopped it. Miami never adjusted. Miami was never prepared. Miami never kept contained. Again, that was a play of contain. You make the stop, they kick a field goal. It's an eight point game. You're still going to have the ball back with maybe a minute left. But of course, Mario Cristobal, in his Mario Cristobal ways, finds a way to burn a timeout when he didn't have to, because that's what he does. Watching, I mean, watching this defensive secondary is painful, but what killed me the most was watching the defensive line get blown off the ball the whole game. No pressure, zero sacks. I know they only threw the ball 16 times. Doesn't matter. They got nothing. They had no, I mean, they had nothing inside. They were, it was brutal, brutal. But goodness, watching, my gosh, Jaden Harris, Lord have mercy. Watching him, watching Daryl Porter, Lord have mercy. Goodness gracious. Getting beat on that pass. I, I think that was uh, Daryl Porter who got beat deep on that play to make it 21, 21, uh, 10 on third and long. And, and you knew what they were going to do. You knew it. You knew it. Do they teach how to jam the receiver at the line? These guys get free release constantly. Mario Cristobal is as bad a head coach, a bad of, as bad a game manager of a football game team as I've ever seen. The two field goals he refuses to kick, the extra point that he gives away, the play calling across the board offensively, I thought was terrible again. Once again, how many how many times are you going to run that goddamn bunch formation wide receiver screen and it not work? It never works. You know what works? The slant. The slant patterns work over and over because they're always open. Elijah Royal, 70 plus yard touchdown pass. Those slants work all game. They don't throw them enough. They don't run crossing routes enough. No, let's keep on running that fucking wide receiver screen to a bunch formation for which, unlike last week against Duke, when Miami made an, made an adjustment on it and had a wrinkle and had Jacoby George go deep, they didn't do that again. They went back to let's keep throwing that stupid wide receiver screen that never works. It never works. It's painful watching them run the same shit that doesn't work. And it's like, bro, it's not working. Stop running it. Why don't we ever run a why don't we ever run a a, a run a, a tailback screen, a regular screen? No, it's always a wide receiver screen. I, I mean, the mistakes we made on the in this game, the mistakes the Hurricanes made in this game. I, Watching Francis Mago, I know he had 11 tackles, but good grief, man, that man didn't keep in, keeping his – he didn't keep assignments for crap, and he's the, supposed to be the leader of the defense. The wrong gap, you know, gap responsibility. It, it was just – it was one thing after the other, after the other. Georgia Tech ran for almost 300 yards. And you knew they were going to run the ball the whole game. Did you not prepare for that, Mario? Were you not prepared for Haynes King playing? Were you not prepared? Clearly you were not prepared. And all that to say that Miami still controls its own destiny. Miami still controls its own destiny. Miami wins next week at Wake, again, no, two weeks at home against Wake Forest, which it should, and goes to Syracuse. The Syracuse game that I thought would be a 9-2 versus 11-0 game is now going to be a 10-1 versus a potentially 8-3 game because Syracuse just lost to Boston College. So Syracuse is not... Syracuse is, I thought they were, I thought they're, I still think they're good. Georgia Tech's good. 
The attitude against the ACC is crazy because Georgia gets mollywhopped by Ole Miss, whereas Miami loses by five. And Georgia drops to 11 and Miami drops to 12. Miami's 12, Georgia takes 11. Ole Miss is – yeah, the coaches poll has Ole Miss behind Georgia, yet they just beat Georgia. I, 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 Notre Dame's lost to Northern Illinois. They're ranked ahead of her. I, you know, wow. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Miami still has its, its destiny in, in its hands, but unfortunately, you can't lose another game. There's no margin for error. You have to beat George, Wake Forest. You have to beat Syracuse. And then you have to win the ACC championship. Miami cannot lose the ACC championship game and make the, the college football playoff. They have to win the ACC. And if they do that, they'll end up being the four seed as it is. They'll end up being the four. Maybe the three. Who knows? Depends on how this thing turns out. Because Oregon still has to play Ohio State. One of those is going to drop. BYU damn near lost to Utah yesterday. They're beatable. I'll tell you right now. Watch out for Colorado. Can't believe I'm saying that. Colorado might win that whole damn thing. Colorado might end up in the playoff. Their win over Texas Tech was very impressive yesterday. This year, there's tons of parity. But the problem that still exists in this ranking system is that the SEC gets eternal love forever. They have three two-loss teams ranked 9, 10, and 11. Three of them. Whereas you have two one-loss ACC teams sitting at 12 and 14. It's very, it's, 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 it's kind of comedic, but not to be unexpected. Miami controls its own destiny. Mario Cristobal needs to just get the fuck out the way. Let somebody else coach the team. Let someone else manage the team. Let someone else handle that. He can recruit. Coaching, stay out of it. Because I, 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 I wanted him, I, I championed for him when he was hired. I wanted him for so many years. I cannot believe how bad it is when I watch him coach games. He's a tremendous recruiter. But my God, the X's and O's of the game just are not there. The decisions during the game, not there. Why are you chasing points in the second quarter, in the third quarter, even in the fourth? If you have a 28-26 game and not a 28-23 game, when Miami gets the ball with two minutes left, it changes the entire possession. You're not feeling pressed because Miami's still at two timeouts. You're not feeling as pressed to have to go 90 yards to score or 80 yards or whatever it was to score when all you got to go is probably 50, 55, maybe 60. Get Borogales in the uh, in, Borogales from, from 55 in can make the kick. You don't need to go as far. It changes the way you approach the possession. But you didn't do that. You left points on, you, you were chasing points all game. Defensively, Miami is the same team it's been all year. It's a bad defense. It's a really, really bad defense that's not, that's completely undisciplined, does not stick to assignments, does not, I mean, it's just across the board. Looks unprepared every game. Every game. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. They're being saved by an offense, and this time Cam Ward couldn't save them. But again, they win their next three, they're in the college football playoff. They don't, they'll be sitting watching, a, playing a, a January 1st bowl game somewhere that they don't want to be. And of course, once again, Miami allowed Georgia Tech to dictate. That 10-minute-plus drive in the first half, I mean that's just ridiculous. That's un it's unacceptable. I, I don't so damn near a damn near eleven minute drive, unacceptable. Running the ball, running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. Make a fucking stop. Once again, another no turnover game for Miami as well defensively. They made a statement, all right, a statement of shit, a statement of this is who we told you they were. And the people are going to come out and say, oh, well, they should have lost to Cal. They should have lost to Virginia Tech. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. That's your opinion. I watched Georgia 
to beat 2020 with Florida last week. I just watched Georgia get beat by 18. I watched Bama lose to Vanderbilt, and Vanderbilt is the same record as Georgia Tech. Lost by five at Vanderbilt, a team that had not beaten them in ages. Whereas Georgia Tech's beaten Miami. Hell, Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech holds the 15-14 overall record against Miami. I watched Texas get mud stomped by Georgia. I watched Penn State choke to Ohio State. I watched Ohio State barely get past Nebraska. And Nebraska lost by 49 to Indiana. Thank God Indiana's getting a little respect. They're up to five and six in the two different polls. Yet somehow they're ranked behind Penn State. Don't know how an undefeated 10-0 Indiana is ranked behind an 8-1 Penn State. Doesn't make sense to me. BYU got gifted a win yesterday against Utah. I thought that was not holding, and it, I mean, it shouldn't stop you from making a stop, but it does when it's fourth and 10 and the game is over in your mind and all that stuff. We all know how that works. Ole Miss is now in the conversation again after beating, a, beating the hell out of Georgia. Anyhow, that's all I got. Just disgusted, absolutely disgusting, embarrassing performance. They have a bye week. I wish they didn't. I wish they played this week against Wake Forest because they got to get this stench out of their mouths. But it is what it is. Mario Cristobal finds a way to lose to Georgia Tech again. 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 Let me know your, th let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell. Also, head on, head on over to Rudy's Rant and subscribe over there. Appreciate you. Facts over feelings. Come on now.